good morning. Glad to be here. Glad to be back. Uh, happy to take any questions that you have. Just like that? Just oh, like that. Fantastic. Just like that. Um, <laughs> welcome back. Yeah. Um, Minister Gould, uh, I know that you haven't been in your role since you've been on Met Leave, yeah. but you've been out campaigning. You know what voters are saying in the GTA and the mood in Toronto since Toronto St. Paul's. What is your message to the Prime Minister about how you guys are going to get re-elected? Well, it's about listening to Canadians, right? It's about hearing uh, where they are right now and understanding where they are right now. Um, you know, certainly... Uh, oh, sorry, how about I lift this up a little bit? I'm a bit taller than, than Anita. Um, yeah, I mean, look, so I've been on mat leave for the last seven months and I'm happy to be back now, uh, but I've been out in my community and, and listening to folks in Burlington and, and around Southern Ontario in particular. And what I would say is that, you know, I think there's there's still this feeling of unease um, amongst Canadians. You know, inflation is going down, interest rates have started to come down and that's a welcome relief. But, you know, people are still finding it difficult, um, you know, with paying for groceries and mortgages that are being renewed. Um, and so it's really understanding, I think, where Canadians are at this moment in time and listening to them and reflecting on that. And that's exactly what we're doing over these couple of days in Halifax is, you know, reflecting on what we've heard and what we've gathered over the summer and thinking about what that means in terms of bringing forward um, policies that are going to respond to the needs of Canadians today. So that's exactly the answer the Prime Minister has been giving. But um, if you, if you, oh, good, uh, he's look, listening. So if yeah. you look at the polls, uh, the desire for change that voters seem to feel is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And yet, all I hear ministers here saying is continue to do the work you've been doing and delivering what you said you would do nine years ago. So um, I'm wondering how you, what is your prescription for how you address that appetite for change in the electorate? I think that's a great question. Um, I think the question too, is it change for change sake or is it um, because we need to be doing something differently? When I talk to Canadians and when I talk to people in my constituency, for example, what I hear from seniors about dental care, they like that. They want that to continue. They recognize that if the Conservatives were to get into government, that that probably will not continue. I was in a mom and baby yoga class, right? And I was talking to uh, the people in my class. Many of them are getting the Canada Child Benefit, right, that is helping them with the high cost of living. Many of them are taking advantage of the 18-month parental leave that we put in place, and almost all of them are accessing the lower child care costs. They've found a space and they're getting those lower child care costs. They want those things to continue. They don't want those things to go away. And the question is, what is the change that Canadians are looking for? It's not those changes in policies because those are making a real tangible impact for Canadians. But there are things that need to be different. We need to continue to work to bring down the cost of living, to make sure that there are affordable homes for Canadians. And those are the things that I think it's incumbent upon us to demonstrate that we're hearing what matters to Canadians right now. And we're demonstrating that we can make the changes that are going to impact their lives in a positive way and I think you know it's it's normal we've been in government for nine years that's that's a long time and <laughs> we've done a lot in that period of time but now we need to show Canadians what's next and part of what we're doing here part of what we're going to be doing in Nanaimo is having those conversations about what we've heard from Canadians and how we're demonstrating that we're going to continue to listen to them, but we're also going to be able to make the policy changes and implement new policies that are going to have a positive impact on their lives. Good morning, Minister. JP Tasker from CBC News. How confident are you that the NDP supply and confidence agreement will hold until the end of June as originally planned? And what do you have to do legislatively to keep them on side? 
Well, we've signed the agreement till the end of June. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's something that has been signed and agreed to. And so I'm going to be working uh, on that premise. And I have a great working relationship with uh, Peter Julian, my NDP counterpart. Um, you know, and we're going to, we've, we have some things that are still left in the SACA to move forward on. Um, of course, we're going to keep pushing in that direction, but uh, I'm fairly confident that that agreement is a good agreement, it's a strong agreement, and we'll get to the end of June. Speaking of the U.S., you might have seen that the Democrats, of course, swapped out their leader for someone new, and Kamala Harris is enjoying kind of a wave of popularity, and she's surged in the polls and is now competitive with Donald Trump, and there's a lot of enthusiasm among party members. Have you taken anything away from that for the Canadian example? Does that give you pause and make you think maybe we should do something here and swap out Trudeau and go for somebody who could revive the Liberal Party fortunes here? <laughs> uh, good question. Um, look, Canada and the U.S., although there are similarities, there are a lot of differences. And, you know, just because the Democrats do something in the United States does not then mean that uh, we should be doing that here in Canada as Liberals. What I do think is that progressive voters um, are looking for that continued hope, right? That continued um, ability to make progress, um, advance uh, how we are building a inclusive and progressive society and economy. And I think, you know, what our job as Liberals is to demonstrate to Canadians that that's the path that we're on and that's the path that we must continue on because we do face headwinds from, to be honest, some pretty extreme right-wing views in our own country right now. And so let's make sure that we are putting forward that plan, that agenda, that vision for Canada um, that I believe Canadians want to choose. Hi, Minister Mackenzie Gray with Global News. Just going back to the answer they gave to Tonda, you outlined some of your you know, greatest political hits. You're talking about child care, dental care, uh, child benefit. Is it in your estimation that this is just a communications problem for the Liberals, that you need to sell these things you've already done better, or that fundamental political change needs to happen to get those voters that you used to have back on the side? I think there's a little bit of both, right? I think um, on the one hand, um, it's recognizing that these things don't just happen, right? You have to have a government that is committed to improving the lives of Canadians in real and tangible ways to get things like childcare, to get things like the Canada Child Benefit, and to get things like dental care. We know that Pierre Polyev um, and the Conservative Party of Canada and their members of Parliament are against those things, right? Um, you know, even though they voted for childcare, if you actually listen to their speeches in the House of Commons, they basically equate it with socialism and you know talk about the fact that if they were to get elected they would make it more conservative i don't really know what that means because when i speak to canadian parents they like having access to a quality space and they like having um, access to an affordable space. So yes, we have more work to do, right? We absolutely have more work to do to build more spaces and to make sure that it's accessible to every Canadian child that needs a space. But throwing out the system is not a solution. On the other hand, it's about making sure that we are thinking about what the future of Canada looks like and providing that vision of a progressive future for Canadians and enabling them to make that choice. So it's both. It's, you know, about us talking about the things that we're doing um, and talking about them in a way that is meaningful for Canadians and that connects with them. But it's also about listening and responding to the needs of Canadians and sharing what our view, view, uh, vision for the future is. Last question. Bonjour, Madame Gould. Euh, depuis hier, on vous entend dire, on a écouté les gens sur le terrain. Euh, C'est avec le contenu puis des mesures qu'on va euh, regagner en popularité. Du point de vue du, de, comme leader, qu est -ce, qu est -ce, comment ça va se traduire dans l'agenda législatif? Quelles seront vos priorités, vous, des, 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 des projets de loi déposés en Chambre cet automne? Oui, mais... Euh... Comme j'ai mentionné, je viens d'avoir sept mois de congé maternité. Alors, un de mes objectifs aujourd'hui, c'est pendant ces deux jours et, et à Nanaimo, c'est de vraiment écouter à mes collègues maintenant, de voir ce qu'ils qu ont euh, sur l'agenda et ce qu'ils veulent faire aussi, et de réfléchir avec nos projets de loi 
c'est quoi les priorités des Canadiens et assurer que nous faisons cet agenda en avançant. Alors, pour moi, maintenant, je suis, j'ai hâte d'être de retour, mais J'aimerais plutôt écouter mes collègues et réfléchir avec ça pour assurer que l'agenda de l'automne, c'est quelque chose qui reflète les besoins et les espoirs des Canadiens. Et à quel point votre entente avec le NPD est fragile avec euh, l'arbitrage exécutoire là, qui, a été, euh, qui a été demandé par votre collègue au travail? Euh, bon, le, le contrat avec, euh, ou le, comment on dit ça, le um, « agreement »? L'accord, merci. L'accord avec l'NPD est spécifique. Euh, nous avons des choses, euh, donc nous sommes en accord et c'est pour ça que nous avançons. Bien sûr, il va y avoir des différences entre les deux parties, ça c'est normal. Nous sommes deux parties différentes et c'est un accord d'assurer que nous pourrions arriver au juin 2025. Alors, euh, on comprend qu'il y a des différences, qu'il va y avoir des différences d'opinion, de politique en certains égards, mais il y a aussi des endroits où nous sommes d'accord. Alors, je crois que c'est toujours un accord qui est fort, qui va aller en avant, euh, mais euh, quand même, il va y avoir des choses, donc euh, nous ne sommes pas d'accord. Vous êtes confiante. Je suis confiante. Bon. Merci. Merci. Bonne journée.